All right, you guys <clears throat> almost ready to get started? Yes. Yeah. I don't want to get back to the bar. <laughs> that is easy. Yes, no. um, I'm really excited that we have uh, the Libertarian Party's national chairman, uh, Nicholas Arworks, here with us all the way from um, Phoenix. It's not like there are many cities out there for me to not remember the name. Phoenix. Um, I'm going to tell you really quickly the first memory that I have of sort of, kind of meeting Nicholas Arbor. So there we were at the National Convention in Las Vegas in 2012. Yeah, and, and this gentleman, um, we're going through the election for national chair. Hotly contested, several people running um, votes neck and neck over and over and over <clears throat> and our current chair stands up to speak for Noda for none of the above gives this big huge passionate glowing speech about how we obviously have division you know with this set of candidates and I will be damned if Noda did not win the next round of elections <laughs> so Chairman Sarwark was pretty much responsible for none of the above winning national chair in Las Vegas. Now we did reconvene, I believe it was the next day before we sort of got all that sorted out. Uh, but that's my first memory of sort of kind of meeting Nicholas Arwark. So he's a bit of a troublemaker, um, but uh, he's, he's a pretty pretty good guy. And so um, I'm interested, to, I have no idea what he's going to be speaking about. I'll let it be a surprise. So. Um, Without any further ado, Chairman Farwork. Do I need this? Okay, do I need yeah. this? No, he yelled at me. Alright, um, the title of my speech tonight, and I was talking to Jessica and Roger about how I like to do this. They asked, how long do you need? I said, well, about an hour. And they said, well, how long are you going to speak? And I said, 20, 25 minutes, maybe. Yeah. The way I like to do this is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a speech. So I'm going to you like it if you don't doors right there. Uh, but at the end of it, I like to take questions, because I, I when I go over to state conventions, I like to know what the libertarians in each individual state, what, what's the biggest concern for them. But I came out here to Little Rock to tell a group of libertarians what to do. And I know that that's probably the most popular thing I could do tonight, is come out and tell you all what to do. Because libertarians love to take orders, it's probably their favorite thing. And they love to follow directions, and so I'm hopeful that you'll follow the directions that I give you tonight. Because I'm here to ask you to do three things, and only three things for the Libertarian Party. The three things are, I want you to show up, I want you to be nice, and I want you to win. We'll start with show up. Who here knows what a big rib is? Right? For those who don't know what a McRib is, a McRib is a processed boneless pork sandwich that McDonald's puts out on a sort of non-schedule schedule. Every so often there's a McRib there, you can go get a McDonald's and people get real excited about it even though it's fails in comparison to any real barbecue. Who knows what a Big Mac is? Show hands. Oh, everybody does. Yeah, everybody does because a Big Mac is the most popular sandwich in the entire world. McDonald's has sold billions of them. You can buy them at any McDonald's, anywhere you go, anywhere. With a McRib, you wonder, well, gosh, is it fall? Is the price of pork down? Do they do some new advertising campaign? Can I get one? I don't know. You walk into McDonald's, you don't know. With a Big Mac, you can always get 
a Big Mac and a McDonald's. Anywhere you go, you can get a Big Mac and a McDonald's. For too long, the Libertarian Party has been the McRib of politics. Where people think, gosh, I really do like those Libertarians. Man, I, maybe they'll be on my ballot this time. I don't know. But wouldn't that be exciting? That's got to stop. We have to stop being the McRib of politics and start being the Big Mac of politics. We have to start being on everyone's ballot every time, every state, every election that they go to, they can vote Libertarian. And the reason that we have to stop doing that is we have, as a party, a wasted vote problem. Do you guys know what the wasted vote syndrome is? Somebody who wants to speak in public, tell me what the wasted vote syndrome is. I can't vote for can't vote for him, he can't win. If, if I vote for him, and he doesn't win, I have my vote. That's not the wasted vote. That is not the wasted vote. But we do have a wasted vote problem. The wasted vote problem is, there are people out there who don't know they're libertarian yet. There are people out there who have been screwed over, over and over and over again by going, Democrats! Oh, shit. <laughs> Republicans! Oh, shit. And they flip back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And eventually they get to the point where they go, Man, slamming my car left and right, left and right into walls is not working. I'm done. I want to vote for somebody who believes in me. I want to vote for somebody who supports all of my freedoms all of the time. I want to vote for somebody who doesn't make me pick or choose between freedom to marry and freedom to carry. Between do I keep my paycheck or am I allowed to smoke cannabis? I want somebody that supports all my freedoms. I want to vote for a libertarian. And they go into that ballot box and they pull out their ballot and they're checking boxes and they get to a race and they want to vote libertarian. No libertarian there. That is a libertarian vote that has been wasted. And we, as a party, wasted it. And that's unacceptable for a political party. And that's what we have to change. And the only way to change that is for all of us to show up. I don't know how many of you are football fans, but if you've ever been a fan of a bad football team, and I'm married to being a fan of a bad football team, <laughs> you know that there are no seasons where game one, they lost, and game two, they lost, and game 14, they lost, and game 15, they lost. And you know, like the Detroit Lions one year, they lost 15 games in a row. The Detroit Lions, if you're a defensive back for the Lions, you're not in the locker room on game 16 going, you know, I'm just not doing it this time. Screw this. I, we're not going to win. I'm not, I'm not going to show up. I'm going to just, you know, sit in the locker room and, and cry about being a Detroit Lion. <laughs> they go out and they show up every game, every time. Because the job of a football player is not to win the game. It is to win the game, but it's not to win the game. The job of a football player is to put on that jersey, that uniform for their team, and go out and represent those fans that came out who love that football team, who are diehard Detroit natives who love the Detroit Lions. And they do that job every single time, whether they lost the last game or they didn't, whether it's the first game of the season, the last game of the season, or the Super Bowl. They go out and they play every game. As libertarians, we need to show up to every game. We need to show up to every race. Now, I was talking to Dr. Packer last night after the repetition, and he said, and I went check out with the media because he can't trust me. He said that in Arkansas in 2016, there'll be one senator, four congressmen, 17 state senators, 100 state house offices up for election. That's just legislative, that's not local. 122 spots on the ballot. If the Arkansas Libertarian Party can commit to showing up 
Make the people in this room make the right decision. Telling other people, getting them involved, and asking them, will you stand up and not let us waste another vote? Then every Arkansan will have at least four libertarians on their ballot. Every Arkansan who's tired of switching, flip-flopping back and forth between Republicans and Democrats will have at least four libertarians on their ballot. At least. And we won't waste those votes. And so what I'm asking you is to show up. 